Well, today we have with us Sal Bosini of the Harlem River Navy. I've had Sal on my podcast, and we had a really great time talking about all things fundraising. And Sal's an expert at fundraising and said, well, we have to have you come on and talk to our audience about this. So with that, we invited Sal to come out. And today he's going to share with you his tips and techniques for how to close an investor. And I know for many of our startups and even our investors, they're looking for those tips and techniques as well. If you have questions along the way, go ahead and put them in the chat box. We'll do our best to answer those. And then afterwards, we have two great startups that we want to show you as well. So with that, let me go and bring Sal up and have Sal talk about his background and what he did to get into the role he is in today. Sal, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Hal. Thank you for the encore presentation. I really do appreciate it. Um, I have been, for the past almost 25 years, been um, working in financial services, but that's taken different types of roads. I started my career at Goldman Sachs in the investment banking division in 1998. And then at the age of 29, I raised $30 million for um, buying distressed loans from Bear Stearns. So that was the first time I managed my own institutional um, balance sheet, if you will. And then I did it again with another partner of mine who's our general counsel to this day. And I was living out west at the time. And that was where there was a lot of default that was out there. And I actually got the idea from my ex-boss, who was the former treasury secretary. He went out west um, to buy IndyMac. And I was buying a lot of what we call these defaulted hard money loan um, you know, funds. And they were basically very mismanaged. They were um, you know, people were not investing the proper, you know, loan to values or anything. And we made some money off of that because a lot of it was distressed. I wrote my second book at that point called Raising Real Money, Real Estate Funds Uncovered uh, for people who are interested in that stuff. However, the other aspect to that is in 2013, I wound up getting outbid by a bunch of people who were doctors and dentists. And what they were doing is, is that they were buying what we call necessity retail. And I pulled together um, millions of dollars tens of millions of dollars to be able to, to buy these for cash. And I was outbid and I gave the money back. And what happened was, is that a lot of the families that I gave the money back to, some of them were life science families. And they said, Sal, you know, you've done so well in real estate. Why don't you put your guns towards us and see if we can work together? And that's how Harlem River Navy was actually created is because it's my two other partners who all have equal pedigree, um, similar to mine, if not better. My one partner, Albert Yu, and he was managing six billion dollars for the Rockefeller family office, not the broker dealer back in, you know, back at the age of 26 um, in their life sciences group. And my other partner, he uh, has done the same thing for the state of Texas um, pension, managing their life sciences venture. So there's a lot of pedigree there that we were able to do that. And one of the things that we found out is that, um, and this is how we, we put it together, is that a lot of these real estate families hall have a gateway drug to life sciences. And it's called philanthropy. And that philanthropy is usually very expensive, poorly run, and you know, almost invested on emotion. And when our families found out, our real estate families, that they could invest alongside us in the same way in our deals that are world class, um, and they knew where the money was going and you know, had much lower expense ratios, like 100 cents on the dollar was going towards the what we call direct private investment, people were very, um, very encouraged by that. And we now have about 20 names under our belt. All of them are doing really well. We've had one hiccup, um, but you know, in private equity, you can sort of roll things into another. But we make private direct investments. And I have to say, like, you know, it's it's the quality of the deals that we get into, and it sort of expands the network, and that's sort of the spice of life, too. I was telling Paul not too long ago that uh, one of the deals that we have invested into called Thrive Bioscience is um led by a world-class CEO, a founder. It's gonna be his 15th exit and his eighth unicorn. And we're very proud. We have about $2.5 million you know, allocated into that, invested into it. Um, all of our CEOs have had multiple exits. But the other thing too, which is really telling is that they all have world-class multifamily or single family offices as lead investors into all of these deals, which means it's not like, you know, when you look at a capitalization table, sometimes you see like $5,000, $10,000. These are millions of dollars that are being um, placed into these um, into these opportunities. And because what these families really want is some sort of a legacy, right? That's really what it is. It's like they have the discretionary income to build a legacy. And that's done pretty well. And we're going to be pivoting into other things um, soon. We, uh, you know, we are pretty strong in life sciences. We did do some AI stuff last year. We invested in a company called AI Scout, which you'll be hearing about um, during the fall, probably more popular than Bud Light actually during the football season. 
Um, and the reason is because it's if you have a camera and a phone and you can do a few moves, you can quartile yourself. And it's easy, it's very interesting uh, because it's already been very successfully used as technology in East India to bring people over to Britain to play in professional sports leagues. So we are we're we're community focused. We're a cabal of about twenty families, um, very 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 um, active, very engaged and. Uh, our motto is interactivity is the new currency. So we're always, if you're on my email list, you're getting emails from me. Um, you're getting notifications. We're always inviting our CEOs to come in and talk. I used to write these long letters, but nobody read them. So I'm not writing them anymore. I'm just going to have them, you know, come from the horse's mouth itself. But that also adds a tremendous amount of credibility too, you know, for the capital raising. So, um, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of success doing this. We've been very smart. And it probably comes down to one thing, Hall. And, and really what it is, it's the power of your network. And if you have a strong network, you're going to be doing well. If you have a strong network in what we call buy-side finance, uh, you know, venture capital, private equity, investment banking, you're going to see some great deals. If you are, you know, if you live, for example, in, um, you know, Austin, Texas, you're not going to see as good quality deals, you know, because it's just, it's a different world down there. It's not as financially focused and oriented. And there's people who pay a lot of money to go to these clubs to be able to see, you know, great deal flow. But considering uh, myself and my partner's reputation in the industry for doing what we say we're going to do, not to mention with a, you know, very successful track record on that, it actually comes together quite well. And that builds a story in and of itself.